Okay. Good evening and welcome to the October 22nd Board of Selectmen meeting. We are being taped on cable access television. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, we have all kinds of fun and excitement lined up this evening. We're starting off with the annual tax classification hearing. And Mary, is there a hearing that I sh uh, uh, notice I should be reading? Yes, there should be one in the packet. They, it's um, the newspaper hearing. Oh, okay. No, is that, uh, yeah. yeah. Saw that. It looks like an invoice, but the, the data is actually. Yeah, I saw it, but it's not like yeah. right after this. So. Yes, I thought. Thank you. Okay, in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 56, a public hearing will be held in the Selectman's Meeting Room, Town Hall, Hanson, Massachusetts, on Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019, at 7 p.m., for the purposes of allocating the percentage of tax levy to be borne by each class of property for fiscal 2020. All interested taxpayers are encouraged to present oral or written information on their views. This is a necessary hearing which must be held prior to certification of the fiscal 2020 tax rate. And it is on Board of Assessors and Board of Selectmen. Okay, I, um, with that, I will hand it over to Look, you. We need a uh, motion to open the hearing. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, great. Lee? Good evening, everyone. I think everybody here knows me. I think we've been this route. Um, last year with the same board um, but I just wanted to introduce a couple people I wanted to do um, Emer McDonough she's the newest board of assessors um, she was um, elected in the past May election so she's our new member Denise Alexander I think most of you know Denise she's the administrative assessor in our office and also the president of Plymouth County Assessors Association right really? now. Really? Good for you. I love it. That's <laughs> very good. And yeah. she's actually responsible for doing all the paperwork, so I'm very grateful in the, in the, um, the uh, computer work here. So I'm very grateful to have Denise. She works really hard. Um, so everybody, does anybody need a handout? We have a couple of handouts. I know the Board of Selectmen, you have them yeah. either on your computers or your handouts. Um, so the handouts here, um, the first page, number two, actually page two, um, these are the uh, votes and actions that have to be considered this evening. Um, our first is whether or not you're going to vote to have a uniform tax rate or a split tax rate. The second will be for the residential exemption if you want to vote for that. The third will be the small business ex exemption. And then the fourth, it's not a vote, but the fourth will, um, I will need signatures for the LA-5 to submit to the um, DLS. So the purpose of the classification hearing is to determine whether the town will continue to utilize a single rate tax for all classes of property or to split the tax rate. Shifting the burden to the commercial, industrial, and personal property, which we call the CIP, from the residential class. We are here to present the information compiled by my office to allocate the percentage of tax levy to be borne by each property tax class. Um, page three <coughs> on your handouts. They actually give you the, um, it just displays the scenario of how the tax rate would shift um, if we were to shift the burden um, and have a, a split tax rate between the residential and the commercial and industrial. Um, based on the current information, our tax rate is estimated at 1527 per thousand for 2020 as a single rate. That's down 26 cents from fiscal 2019. Pages five and six, I'm sorry, four and five. Uh, page four is just the pie chart that just shows you the amount of residential. We're at 92% residential. Uh, for commercial, industrial, and personal property, it's only an 8% split. 
So as you can see, we're primarily a residential community. Pages five and six. That presents a detailed dollar tax amount affected by the tax rate if we were to adopt a split rate using the average single family, residential, and commercial industrial assessments. So that just shows you how the tax rate would shift. Um, we can shift up to 50%. We, we, <coughs> we do the uniform tax rate 1%, 5%, 10%, 25 and 50 just to show the example there. Page seven. Oh, before we get to page seven, um, this would be the point that you would vote whether or not you wanted to adopt a uniform tax rate or if you wanted to split the tax rate with the commercial taking the larger burden. And historically, we've always had the uniform tax rate. Yes. Um, and I don't think we want to um, give any disincentive to any businesses locating here, so I, I doubt we want to shift that, but did anybody want to have any discussion about that, or if not, I'll move to the moment. Yeah, I was going to say I move yeah. to adopt the uniform tax rate. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right, good. Page seven, this is just an informational page. It gives you a three-year comparison of the values of the average residential condos and commercial industrial property. As you can see, the values for the residential are, are on an upward, still continuing to go upward, where the um, commercial industrial is, is coming down a little bit. It's so fascinating how the condos are neck and neck, though. There's really not that much of a difference. Right, right. I think with the amount of condos that we have now and the desirability to come to Hanson that we're seeing, seeing those prices come up. Um, page eight explains um, what, what, what you're going to vote on for the next two actions. Um, the first one is the residential tax exemption. Uh, the residential tax exemption is for property owners of class one residential property whom own and occupy their property. A percentage is applied to an exempt, to exempt a dollar amount of value that is exempt from taxation. Typically, this is adopted in communities that have a high rate of rental properties. Um, examples would be Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, Cape and Islands towns. Um, the Board of Assessors voted last night at their meeting to, to recommend to not adopt the residential tax exemption. It's been historically that Hanson does not adopt it. Well, I mean, for Pete's sake, if we voted to adopt, well, would, wouldn't this apply to like 99% of the houses just about in Hanson? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. that's not sustainable. Yeah. Not at all. Okay. I'd like um, to make a motion, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion not to adopt the residential tax exemption. Second. All in favor? Okay. The next one is the small commercial exemption. And it gives you a little little uh, history about legislation in 1994. This is came in uh, that it was a responsibility of the Board of Selectmen to decide if the small commercial exemption would be adopted in their towns. Um, adoption of this pr provision does not guarantee the reductions of the taxes will be passed on to the small business, however. An example would be if um, Assume that Shaw's Plaza was assessed for 999000 and each business employed less than 10 people because that's the criteria. Um, the plaza owner would qualify for the exemption, so it doesn't necessarily mean it would be passed to the small business person. Um, the, uh, according to the Department of Employment and Training, Hanson has 53 businesses which would qualify for the small commercial exemption if each was situated in a property assessed under one million. Uh, there might be a little typo in here, but there's 80, 86 of the businesses are home occupations which do not qualify for the exemption. 37 businesses um, occupied properties yet do not own the property, so they would not benefit. It would be the property owner that would benefit from the savings. 
um, only 16 businesses would benefit from the actual tax exemption on here. Um, again, the Board of Assessors voted last night to not recommend the adoption of the small commercial exemption, and historically, Hansen has not adopted it prior to. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? And lastly, I must notify the Board of Selectmen that the excess levy capacity for fiscal 2020 is $10,015. This does not require a vote. It's just a notification that I have to give you as part of the classification hearing. And I will have to get signatures on the LA-5 to send to the Department of Revenue. Okay. Are you looking for signatures yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah. We saw it at the bottom? Yes. Anybody have any questions for me? Or? Okay. Good job as usual. Um, I will entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you, Lee. As usual, thank excellent you job. Very thank much. you. We appreciate thank you. it. Yeah, right. thank you. I appreciate the financial team here because the financial team here is just. Um, we all work well together and things run very smoothly. So. I really appreciate Todd Hassett, uh, Gene Sullivan, very much. Well, we're lucky to have you, and we appreciate all of your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, that brings us to Sustainable Materials Recovery Program Grant. This is an annual grant, um, or maybe semi-annual grant, that the Board of Health receives the amount of the grant is nine thousand dollars this is for recycling <clears throat> so we just need the board's approval to accept the grant okay i will entertain a motion so move second any discussion okay all in favor clipping right along let's see what time we're at Seven fifteen. uh community preservation committee discussion regarding playing fields and maintenance so I, well, Mr. Hickey, how are you? And I'm not sure who else is here for this discussion. Obviously, everybody's welcome to chime in. Um, so uh, I think you guys kind of are aware, the board is kind of aware of what the situation is. Um, but can, I don't know who the best person is to cue this up and kind of talk about the discussions that have happened thus far, and then we can talk about next steps and where we go from here. Sure, I'd be happy to start okay. uh, Just as a background, we've had some interest from uh, sports leagues in town about potentially applying for CPC funds for field renovation. A lot of the attention has been given to the middle school field. Mm -hmm. And we've welcomed the opportunity to learn a lot from the volunteers from these leagues who spend a lot of time making these leagues run and making sure that the fields are as best working order as possible. A lot of the conversation around the middle school field is that the soccer league can't use it. The league has deemed it unsuitable for play. The CPC discussions have, have basically skipped ahead a few steps saying, if we eventually were to get an application seeking to use funds, and it eventually came in front of you, and ultimately to town meeting, it's very likely that there would have to be a conversation about an overall plan for the town on how it will maintain its fields. That's something that the committee heard a lot from school district staff, as well as uh, leaders in the respective sports mm -hmm. leagues, that there isn't a clear maintenance plan at the middle school and at Indian Head. So while tonight isn't, the focus isn't necessarily on how much the middle school field will cost to, to renovate, it really is uh, it's about the maintenance piece, uh, because regardless of that application, it's probably an issue that that folks want to talk about. I appreciate you putting this on the agenda so quickly. Yeah, so, uh, oh, so yeah, it's no problem, Tom. I, I, know that, um, I know that there's been a coalition of sports um, parents and groups um, working with community preservation, sort of trying to prioritize the fields and all that stuff, and I think that's fantastic. That's one of the uses for community preservation, money and funding, and so we always like to see people um, work on those things. And um, 
having had a daughter who played at the Hanson Middle Field on the soccer field, and this was a few years ago and it wasn't that great then, um, I'm sure it hasn't improved. Um, so I, I'm not sure that we're gonna solve all of these, or in fact, I'm sure we're not going to solve all of those problems tonight. Um, but I think it would be helpful to get a perspective on how everybody views the roles and responsibilities with respect to that particular piece of property. And um, I don't know who's the best person to talk about, you know, where do the soccer parents begin and the schools end and who's responsible for what. And I'm truly not asking this to be controversial. I really am asking, like, what, are, what, is, what is everybody's perspective on, on responsibilities? And, of course, I'd love you to chime in as our parks and fields representative for your thoughts, if you've got any commentary on that, you know. Right, well, in the past, um, Parks and Fields just hasn't been responsible for the fields at the middle school. Okay. You know, we don't have enough funding. Parks and Fields has seven fields. Um, we get 25000 and that's to fertilize and maintain the sprinklers. So there's always been that question of who's responsible for that middle school field. Yeah. Is it the school department? Is it Parks and Fields? So Parks and Fields, as far as we're concerned, it's the school department's okay. jurisdiction and you know, and it's their fields. And it's historically kind of been that way. That's it's kind of how it's been, little, but then okay. these guys yeah. may tell you differently. Okay, but, and, and I wasn't saying that to put it on the spot. I really yeah, didn't no, know that fine. that was your perspective, but the, yeah. that's good to know. Um, guys, the what... The point being, Laura, is it is a school field, but the, we don't schedule it. So okay. we have no idea who uses it when or who's responsible for the cleanup or any of the above. I know that Ernie schedules it to mow it. In, okay, so in, you mow it and fertilize it, that type of stuff? Or, no, no up, fertilizer, it's, okay. It's been a problem since that school was built. The, the fields were built improperly, and I'm not blaming that on any specific group. I think we can see that whatever happened, it's gone awry. Right, And exactly. who did it or how we got here is really almost immaterial because we're here. Um, and so we need to take a look at the field and figure out how the heck do we get that looking better, get it so that it can be used. And, and I think, I may be making this up and talking out of school, but here we go. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that at some point the soccer league even said, we're not playing officially games on there. And didn't we have to use the high school fields? And I mean, it, it's so it's like, oh, not yeah. just not just like, you know, the soccer mom saying, we don't like this field. It's oh, like, no, you know, officially, you know. Nobody's yeah. blaming anyone. Those fields have been a problem with drainage, with water, with everything. Everybody in this room, I, Jim was on Pox and Fields. Yep. I've been on Pox and Fields for years. Kenny's been on. And it's been a problem, and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars to create the fix. Yeah. I mean, the back of the fields, which we're going to be, whether you want to call them softball fields, Jim, at one point, mm -hmm. or baseball fields at one point, <coughs> they're underwater. Yeah. If you go up there at any given point, those fields are not usable. So In soccer, definitely. I mean, you would, yeah. I've never seen gla glass, broken glass. Go out of bridge and loom, other than up at that field. So that loom got hauled in there at some point. That's concerning. When yep. those fields were being built, and I think anybody that these guys have all had kids try to play on those fields, it's scary. It's not a good, and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So to do Tom, let me understand where you guys. I know you've had several meetings, and I came to the tail end of one, and I think Matt was at one of your CPC meetings where you guys were starting this process of talking about this and I'm sure you've had many meetings that I'm not aware of but um, uh, are we at a point where we've got a uh, somebody saying we're going to put in an application to rehab that field where how, where are we on that not at this point we're using some administrative funds that CPC has to have a firm take a look at a couple of schematic options for the middle school field one being the cost to simply restore it back to its original design from the from 90, late 90s. Mm -hmm. And then another design based on input from school district and town leagues would be, is do we have other needs and demands in 2019 that might warrant us to rethink it? From CPC's perspective, we, we just anticipate that should an application come forward, it won't be long before someone says, and how are we gonna maintain this newly renovated Absolutely. field. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And, and yeah. it may be an idea dead on arrival if that ultimately isn't answered. So there's no current application in front of us, but there certainly is a lot of 
a lot of interest. Okay, and like I said earlier, um, just a sec, Mr. Hayes, and I'll, I'll get to you. Um, like I said earlier, I don't anticipate that we're going to obviously solve this problem that's taken a while to develop, um, but it seems to me as though um, it's a much broader problem than just the soccer field. It's generally the maintenance of, of the fields and um, and parks and you know uh, all kinds of things that need weed whacking and mowing and all this stuff and we've been um, counting on the good nature of our volunteers to do that it's not particularly a sustainable model because all it takes is losing one good natured volunteer and the whole thing you know goes to pot which has happened literally um, so we're, we're going to have to take a look at that you know more long term and um, I think commit to work with everybody on what that maintenance piece is going to look like, but totally agree. Doesn't make sense to make an investment in that property, get it back to a place where it should be, and then let it go to pot again. Um, that's just ridiculous. Um, you know, and, and it will be asked at town meeting. Frankly, if CPC puts an article forward and, and, you know, and you're fortunate enough to get funding, which you generally do because you guys do a good job of putting the articles out there, people are going to say, well, okay, that's great. It gets us over this hump, but long term, what's the plan? So um, I, I, I appreciate you guys talking about that. Did any of you guys have a viewpoint on that or perspective or... No, I think you got to designate. I keep looking at you and I don't mean to <clears throat> no, just look fine. over at you. You've got to designate ownership of the field. Who's going to you know, take care of as far as, you know, planning it out and who's going to play there. But you also have to figure out, you know, the maintenance part of it. It's like a lot of money. Well, and I, I feel like it's the same well. thing with parks and fields, right? And you guys know. I mean, you spent how sure. much time did you spend of your life doing the softball right. fields? But Ernie and I had a relationship that goes back probably 15 or 18 years now with softball. And I maintained with the group of people that I had the softball portion of that. I had nothing to do with the soccer. Um, obviously, you know, the numbers um, ended up getting low enough that we didn't need the middle school. We also didn't need Robinson. Yeah, yeah. Now they play at half the games at LZ and in Whitman. But at the time, I had the crew that maintained that softball field up there because we used it five nights a week. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, Tom, it comes back to, this is great and I love it, but... You know, who's volunteering at the end? Oh, well, if I could? Yes, Mr. I'm sorry. I said I was going to call you. And I forgot. That's okay. There's been some discussion, and Bob and I have had this discussion about, and, and I think it's even been shared with some other people, not particularly maybe with Tom and the group that's here. We would love to see an artificial field very similar to what high school has put it up there. No maintenance to speak of like you have here. CPC funds can possibly use, be used for the under building of the field, and then we would have to raise funds for the covering of the field. But most of the cost is born on getting a field prepared, especially an artificial can surface. Can you check on that, Tom, with Stuart, the, the prepper? Because uh, I know, Bob, you mentioned that to me. The devil's in the details on that, and the way those regs. Have you talked to Stuart about that at all? Not recently. Okay. I think Bob's. I, I think Bob is correct. Okay. That, 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 I did a little bit of research on it, the, and I think they can do the underneath and the prep part for the design and part. That would house. give yeah, the like, design. Yeah. If you look at what goes on at the high school field, that field is used day and night by every sport, whether it's lacrosse, whether I mean it's used. And people I know, when we went to town meeting, there wasn't a lot of discussion when we decided we had to recover it. But it had like 12 years or 13 years of use. If you just look at a regulation football field, so to speak, and we may not be playing football after the bill gets voted in the Senate about no youth football. But at any rate, that field gets used so much. If you just had to maintain it, it's forty to 50000 a year as a football field. Mm -hmm to do it, and you still have to stay off it because the grass on natural seeded fields gets burnt right off. Whereas if you invest the money into that field, your maintenance costs, you lose 50 grand a year in cost, and you get it back in the, in the long-term effect of the field by what it costs you just over the years. But you have to count the use. You get 50 times the use. But if, so if we did turf, nice would, would our East guys be able to maintain that? Or, or, turf? Yeah, I mean like... Any grass or if we did regular, turf? Yeah, artificial turf. 
I know there's not a lot of maintenance, but don't yeah. you clean it or anything? There's, yeah, there's a company. What like with the high school? In when when we put the bid out, we uh, requested that they give us uh, eight years of maintenance of engrowment of that field, and that's yeah. built into the contract. Okay. All right. So. Okay. And that you is have interesting. Help, Laura, the use of the field. Yes. Laura, I, I would say I just recently had a meeting at the high school with both <coughs> women enhanced and youth programs. Uh, because we're at that point at the high school where we really only have one usable field. Like the baseball team basically didn't even get on their field almost the entire season because of how much rain we had. And you're seeing most of the communities now are going to the artificial turf model. Um, they're able to do it in a more environmentally safe way. They do drainage really well. And you can have one team on after another. Whereas when you have a grass field and you have a rainy day, you might even tell a team you can't even practice on the team field today because you're going to kill the field on one mm -hmm. day of, of practice. So we have a long-term plan, and obviously it's long-term, is to try to turn our current varsity baseball field into a varsity uh, a turf baseball field that would also be an all-purpose field that would be able to use for lacrosse and soccer for the youth as well um, outside of the, the high school hours. And then the upper softball field to turn that into a, a varsity softball field, which would also be a... Um, multi-purpose field. That would allow both communities to have fields available to them uh, when the high school's not using it, which is mostly on the weekends, um, after six o'clock at mm -hmm. night. Um, the upper field, which would be the softball field, would eventually get lighted, so it would end up being able to solve a lot of the problems in town. From my perspective as the athletic director in the district, the more kids have opportunities to play, I, I, nothing bothers me more than to get a phone call from youth soccer and say, can we use the field? And me to have to say no, because I only have that one field for all of the teams that we have. Right. And a lot of times that field is really bad at the middle school, but sometimes it's just a matter of it's just too wet because it's rained for three days. Yeah. And no matter how good your field is, we had, our, our baseball field's okay, but it was like under, almost everybody was underwater this spring because of how, how bad it was. So that's our kind of our long-term plan. It just it um, would, I think it's cost effective in the long run because you don't pay the, as much maintenance. And but the biggest thing is every field you build, it's like building multiple fields because you can go one team right after another. So that that's our long term <coughs> view at the high school. It's hard as a region because if I were like Hull just approved a great project, Situate's putting in a massive project right now. I think nine million dollars to do in their entire facility at the at the high school. All their fields are becoming a, becoming turf fields. And once they do that, once they're done. Their maintenance crew can now deal with other things in the district, not cutting grass. I mean, it's just you're seeing people having to cut grass and to take that time. It's easier in situate because it's one town meeting and then it's one ballot and you're done. Here it's more difficult. Um, I did at that meeting was productive. One of the members from Whitman was going to go back and try to convince them to maybe get involved in the community preservation um, uh, benefits that you guys have, that we've had here in Hanson for so long. So I'm. Um, but that's a long-term yeah, plan. I know yeah. that Hanson's trying to solve their problems now. I, I would recommend that if they do something to that field, it would make sense to invest in a turf field at that location as well. That would be a huge uh, bonus to youth lacrosse, youth soccer, uh, for all of them to be able to have a field that can go one after the other uh, from 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday until it gets dark. It would, it would be a big plus. Well, so, Tom, um, if uh, CPC was to, if this was to move in the direction, and it seems as though it's going to move, um, I think then you'd be looking maybe for partial funding for the turf field from the taxpayers, but also from, I think you're going to need some funding from the various youth groups to kick in, um, you know, so that it's that, you know, we know there's some private money coming in and it's not, you know, all CPC that's putting the bill. Um, so, um, okay, that that's a good perspective. And um, yes, sir, could you just state your name and uh, your address? Damon Stanton, 220 East Washington, it's uh, Hanson Football. <clears throat> so one of the things a lot of us in this room have had the meetings, um, and Hanson Middle was an easy point, uh, starting point, but we also, in one of our meetings, we had a professional come in, consultant, turf guy, and he said that um, if it's a grass field, it's an unsustainable field to have football, lacrosse, and soccer. So as of right now, all three of those programs don't have any fields in this town at all. One and we can add to that school, the gym classes. That's the gym classes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, if it, it, I mean, it'd be a shame to try to put money into creating a grass field that doesn't solve all the problems. Um, <clears throat> so, like to Mr. Hayes and Mr. Rogers' point, it, 
turf is a year-round solution that can sustain the heavy wear and tear. Um, if not, it may be something that we look at finding another site that could possibly, we could have multiple grass fields where we rotate. Oh, I don't, I don't think anybody here is advocating for grass. I, you know, I, I, I haven't heard any. Well, you know, I was going to ask you, Matt, what your perspective environmentally was on it. Because I, 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 right, because I'm thinking the material that's used is one thing, but then I was thinking, but the water that it saves, I don't know. I haven't done that, right, right. you know, I, analysis. I have, I have a strong opinion one, or the, one way or the other, but, you know, just watching my little cousin play out on the turf fields, you know, you have these little particles of plastic jumping up and can smell it. I don't, you know I mean? I haven't done deep research on yeah. it, but I just, I'm, you know, I'm all natural, you know, it's yeah. go that way, but, you know I mean? I know that there's... I would just say one thing. Uh, I know Matt, from his days in high school, I know he's an environmental guy for sure, but one of the real good benefits too is you don't have the pesticides. Um, you don't have to deal with a lot of those kinds of things on, on the turf field once it's in. And it, they've done, um, that was a big concern in terms of those pellets and there was a study about 10 years ago that there might be some cancer-causing agents in those. They've now found a way to mitigate that by keeping those pellets down. They don't come up as much anymore. When you walk on our current field, because it's more state-of-the-art than the previous one, you don't get as much of that on there. You don't see it as much. Uh, so I think that the, the industry knows that that's a concern, and I think they're doing a better job with that. A lot of the material they use can be uh, a lot safer than it used to be. But for sure, no pesticides. You never have to spray that field and never have to do anything like that. No water, and it really is, uh, I know it seems counterintuitive because it's artificial, but it really is environmentally friendly. I think the middle school would be a good project to start with, right, because we universally agree the field just stinks yes. and it needs to be redone. And so it seems to me like that would be a good place to start, and then if that works and it's successful and everybody <coughs> gets what they want out of it and it's you know reasonably cost effective, then we can take a look at other fields. And by then, hopefully, we'll have figured out what exactly is going to happen at Maquan because we're still in that kind of like trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen there. Although, you know, um, I know a lot of people think it's just going to be torn down, but we'll see. Um, so it, you know, one way or the other. There'll end up being probably some component of a field there, but we obviously don't want to build a field until we've figured out what's going to actually happen with the building. So, um, okay, well, that makes sense. Um, did anybody have any other comments or discussions on this? Um, so, yeah, uh, if you just want to state your name, I know who you are, but if you just, yeah. What's the longevity of a turf field? I don't know anything about this. 10, 10, 12 years, 10 to 12 years, depending on so the that usage. It's torn well, out and we got close to 15 years at the high school okay. uh, because of the maintenance program that we mm -hmm. have. Um, but um, their average, and it's going up, the warranty is going up more and more every year with the new oh. products. Oh, the, very good. The, the other thing is that when, you, when it gets to the end of its life, mm -hmm. it's much less expensive to replace it because what happens is you only have to replace the turf. Like for us, for, us, for example, $400,000, yeah. $385,000, yeah. very cost. We were, this guy is, I'm dreading the day he retires because he saves For the whole us. football field, that's all it cost? He, yes. Um, yeah. It was really- like A little bargaining power. Because there. what happens, yeah. Laura, is yeah. all of the drainage that was done and the maintenance that his guys had kept up with, they didn't have to do anything extra. They just replaced the turf. So if we put, at, and I agree with you, I think Hanson Middle is a great, project to start with and it probably would cost quite a bit to start because you have to do the drainage and get it all ready yeah. but once you do every 12 to 15 years you replace the carpet and it's very cost effective to the point where like to Mr. Hayes's point about how much it costs to maintain a grass field you could take that those funds about 50 percent of it put it into account and you'd have the money for your turf and look we've got to redo that field anyway whether it's turf or not yes. it, it's got to be redone so yes um, yes sir your name and uh, Warm account third drive Yep. Um, so I, I work in Norwell uh, for the school system and about five, six years ago we ripped out all of our fields because we couldn't use them the entire springtime they were underwater. The football team, the football field was used six times a year and that was it wow. because anybody else touched it, it was just destroyed. We put in two turf fields, one well, that used to be underwater and one on the football field. They are now used an incredible amount. There's a constant flow of activity on that building. But the, the important thing is, when we get to the point where that we're scheduling probably 12, 13 years before they're going to need to be replaced, you don't replace the entire field. All you replace is the cover. All the rest of the stuff is done. We actually charge a small fee 
to anybody who uses it, including youth groups, including the schools. So even when the schools use that, we put a small amount, it's like $25 an hour, we put aside into a separate account. If we rent out to a club soccer team, club some, whatever else, we charge about $125 an hour for that. We are gonna have enough money in that account. We're about six years in, we're almost halfway there to replace, when that needs to be replaced, that fund will replace the entire field. So do the youth sport groups kick in Youth too? sports, schools, club, anybody who anybody uses that it. Anybody uses it, there's no... The youth sports, we charge the same amount to that we do the schools. I mean, it's uh -huh. a small amount. It's, it's as much money as, probably less money than you would need fundraising at mm -hmm. any one time. Yeah. Spread out over 10, 12, 13 years, mm -hmm. small increments a year kind of go into that fund. It's a stabilization fund held by the Board of Selectmen. I like that. The, I was not the athletic director at the time, but that was actually the model that we used at Whitman Hanson, and the community members got very upset with that, and they did not like that because they felt like they paid for this turf, their kids should be able to use it, and they did not want to pay that. So we, we at the beginning, we were charging that. I was not the AD at the time, uh, and then they decided, you know what, it's gonna you're gonna pay it through your taxes, or you're gonna pay it through this way, and they. And most of the times, it was three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars that was appropriated. I think through town meeting. Not to say that's not a lot of money, but for a yeah. town or a free cash year, it's you plan it. Ernie had given you everybody like three years' notice what it was. It was on the uh, capital plan for both towns. Collecting that money just got more pushback in our community than maybe a community like Norwell, where they can charge kids more money to play sports. Whereas a lot of our kids, those fees go towards just running and sustaining their programs on an everyday basis. They We got a lot of pushback. Ernie, you, you probably recall the meeting. Oh, I do very well. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, Lark, can I just comment back yes, on, yes, on Bob's yep. comment? Uh, you'll get pushback from me right away. Uh, youth groups should play for free because that that's just the way it is. But any club teams, I would agree with charging club teams where you only have, and they could all be residents of the town, but it's a select group of kids, 12 or 15 kids, they pay. Yeah. But a, a, a town-wide youth program, soccer or lacrosse, no. You know, but um, that would be my thought on that. Bob's got to say. Mr. Hayes. We were, we were, there, was a, there was another discussion back in the days where, what, like, I agree with what Warren's saying, I agree with what Bob's saying. But like, we'll say youth football, youth soccer, some of them charge gate fees, so the field fence. Maybe we might want to look at a model of we're not charging anyone. We're charging a portion, like say XYZ Sport takes in 300 today in gate fees. 20% of it, I'm just making up numbers as we go. 20% of it goes towards the rental of the field. That way you're not 100% retaxing residents all the time over using that field. Because when I was on the committee and we got some serious heat over that. Serious, serious heat. And yeah, so I, uh, because I, I kind of agree. It's double taxation. I see what you're saying, Jim, but uh, <coughs> like right now, Kenny and the guys aren't getting that much money to really take care of the fields, right? So we either need to give more money or we've got to figure out a way to get more money. Are we putting the cart before the horse here to use one of I don't know. Your... What's the cart? What's the horse? Well, we started with Tom and just trying to get funding, and now we're worrying about whether we're going to have to double yes, pay. Yes, we are. Well, actually, we're, I mean, we're maintaining you know. a turf field we don't even have yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, Mr. Rogers. In case anybody's watching at home, we do charge, just so people know, we do charge the groups when they require custodial services. So, for example, Damon's group comes in on a Sunday and they bring a lot of fans. Um, they get paid, they get charged an hourly fee to use that. Mm -hmm. And we have an employee, an SJ services employee, that will be there to help maintain and make sure that it's, it's, it's handled properly. So we just don't charge them anything for the field itself, yes, but they yeah. pay a fee. We don't incur any expenses, theoretically, when they use the field. Okay, understood. Um, okay, well, this was a robust discussion. We've been around the bend and back again. Um, Tom, do you feel satisfied that we've had this conversation? I, I know it didn't give you specific direction, no, we, I, but... I, the C CPC had no expectations. We okay. appreciate the, the early kickoff to the conversation, quite honestly. Parkton Fields needs more money to maintain middle school in Indian Head. Yes. Prior to, you know, artificial, natural, mm -hmm. they don't have enough money to maintain. That's, that's what I seem to have heard just as an individual person, yeah. almost universally. And uh, so that, that's an issue whether or not a turf field or a natural field gets talked about at the middle school. But I think this is a catalyst to 
you know, further conversation. So when, when, when an application does come forward, I think we'll all be more informed. Okay, and just have your people call my people and we'll just keep the conversation going. Yeah. Okay, all right, great. Thank you all for your input. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, moving along here. Um, I, I've got it. You guys can feel free. Don't. It won't be rude. It's like watching paint dry if you don't have to stay. So, is Bob living? Easy. I would. I was Bob Hayes. Yeah. Are you staying for our late? Okay. All right. Um, I, I was just going to suggest, you know, we'll jump around since we already have Bob and Bob here. We can do that discussion. Right, but Arlene wanted to be here. Oh, that's and right. And she's not okay. here, so we're waiting till okay. 8 o'clock for yeah, that. Right. Um, okay, um, so uh, with that, we have got the, we can't talk about the Board of Health appointment because that is with an 8 o'clock appointment with the Board of Health. So we'll move on to number five, which is the waiver of a fee request for Kelly Carlini Rustic Bridal Shows. And... Um, Mr. Hickey had asked prior to this meeting, or am I having a deja vu, or did we already uh, sign off on something similar to this? And in fact, we did sign off on something similar to this. We signed off on this, but I guess they had to cancel the original date and um, rebook it. So um, we are not, in fact, approving a uh, reduction twice. It is the same reduction that's being requested, but for a different date. I hope that all made sense. And Perfect. if it's so, I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay, great. And that moves us on to, I guess we're going to get into old business, Mary. Uh, okay. Update on town administrator search. All right. I had a discussion with Buzz from MRI. They've received 39 applications for the town administrator's position. 14 essays were sent out to various candidates. They have received um, the essays, and MRI is currently scoring the essays. And following that, they will be doing phone interviews with the candidates. They expect to have names to us either the 31st or the 1st of November. And the question from them to us is, how many candidates is the board seeking to see? And once we have that number, I will go on or I can go on and tell you what they said. I don't know if we officially talked about it, but I was we, thinking five-ish or there was There was no official vote, and I told them we didn't have a definitive number yet, but I would run it by the board tonight. And the reason why he asks, he pointed out the process for the interviews, which would be he recommended them be done on one night. If you had three candidates, you could easily get them done on one night if you wanted five or six it may take two nights but the direction was once you have the interviews you should make a decision quickly because yeah. these are good candidates and they're likely to be you know valued applicants in another community so uh i mean 39 applicants that's a huge pool yes and i would really hate to see us just get three for us to look at from that pool i'm i to me, it feels like five. I don't know if this is a highly scientific, you know, kind of conversation. What are you guys thinking? Well, remember, she said 39 applicants, but they sent out... 14. 14. Four, so we're yep. not talking about 39. 14 people. made the cut. 14 made the cut. Yep. Yes, Mr. Dyer. And then also, too, I would, I, Mary, do you know how many applicants sent their essays back? Or was it 14 that was sent out and returned? They had, When I spoke to him last week, he had 11 back, and there were two... Um, that they were waiting because they were out of state and they already had. And he says that we might likely get the other two. So I haven't spoken to him since last Tuesday when they were actually due, but he was comfortable that they would be uh, getting 12 at the, at the very least. So. Okay. Well, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but I don't really want to put a number on it because if they have three applicants that they feel that we should interview and get it done in one night, then okay. But if they have seven people, which is probably too high of a number, mm -hmm. but if they have seven people that they think that we should talk to, then it's seven. 
I like so where you're going. I, I agree I like with Jim 100%. With I don't think yeah. we can put a number on it. It's up no. to them to come to us and say, hey, it, look, we have seven great people. You know what? Right. And we because, only have two good people. We need it through everyone else. Everyone else is terrible. So I don't think we as a board can put a number on it okay. sitting here I, now. I like where you guys are going with that. Unless they Jim's say right. we've got 14 great candidates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to have a problem. Okay. Too, um, then we're going to stop putting on the check um, if they say that. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion uh, that we... Um, MRI decide. Yeah. yeah, that's why we hide. Though. When they get when they get closer to the end, they yeah. might come in and. Do, do we want to say not to exceed seven or something like that? Just no, to I think they okay. get it. Yeah, yeah they okay. they've been doing this they've a while. Doing they're this gonna for a while. Know. Correct, and and I think so. I think they, they, can said they, five can, or six they can definitely they can definitely give you three without a problem. Yeah. Right. They'll probably be able to reach at at six, um, but as he pointed out, it's you should have an hour to an hour and a half per interview, so you can easily get three done in a night. Yikes. And then the next night, do the other two or three. So I asked about, well, what if the board decides it wants to bring two people back because they aren't quite sure? He said, then you should be doing it the next night. They are available to do to do a Saturday. He said you could do a Friday night and a Saturday. I didn't think that would go well, but I just I'm throwing that out there because they said that. Are these? I'm sorry, Mary. Are these interviews? Um in an open session yes these meeting. interviews they once be, yeah. once they give us once we say the number is six or five they will send us the list of candidates and they the candidates names will appear on the agenda on the friday before or whenever we're going to have the meeting um i'm just kind of jumping ahead i i hate to be meeting every week but the meeting in between uh, the fifth and the 19th the week of the 12th we don't have anything going on. We could start that, you know, Tuesday night if it goes Tuesday and Wednesday, and into Thursday if necessary. But again, they did offer that they would be available on a Saturday if you wanted to do a marathon session. Start at nine in the morning, you know, go through everybody and make a decision on a Saturday. I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, uh, <laughs> but I, based on the expression, uh, nine a.m. <laughs> so what four? That's my that's prime time for me. Is, it, is that more appealing to you? It, it wouldn't matter, but I guess my question is, uh, I don't have a problem being here three nights in a row okay. on television because this, again, is one of the most it's important the most decisions important. we'll make. That's, that is, that is yeah. all we will do those evenings. There right. won't be anything yeah. but it's interviews the most for, for so those I, evenings. Yeah, whatever the board decides. Yeah. Yeah. If, I think we, should, we need to make the time for it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so but You're right, Kenny. That's yeah. it. Boom. That's, that's what people it's hard to decide if we're going to do a Friday night and a Saturday if we don't know how many, you know. So can we find out how many? Oh yeah, we, 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 could, we'll... we could get a closer number. I, I can yeah. let them. I can let them know tomorrow, and like I said, they will send whatever number they think is is relevant. I, and I'm guessing they're going to come up with maybe five or six. I like the idea of plowing through on a Saturday and yeah. just get it done. I would too. I uh, you, personally, but I'm mention Friday night. Okay. Friday nights are out. I mean, I don't have. <laughs> okay, you have your limits, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so do you want me to tell them a Saturday? We do a whole day on a Saturday. That's fine. that's yeah. fine. If the number's high, if right. the number's yeah, if low, they, we don't want to no, interview no, seven people on a Saturday. No, you know? no. Yeah. If they have three, four, even five people, yeah, I say bang it out on a Saturday. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. All right, yes. but but if he. So you want more than three, regardless. We want. No, we're not more saying three. that. It's no. a, we want we're them to give us the that, number. But it seems likely the number would be somewhere between three and six. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. I, I will let them. Because if that. we say, "Oh, we want five, and now they know there's two that aren't going to make the cut, and they're just trying to squeeze them in to make five. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Rather have three. So have them give us the number. I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will do that. And. Um, so so as I'm I sorry. We made a motion and it was seconded, but we didn't actually take a vote. What are we more moving? Yeah, what are we yeah. voting on? On the to tell MRI to some, oh, you know, to kind of do that. we need a vote? It, no, we don't need a vote. Okay, I can fine. tell them that the, the decision was leave it up to to them to yeah. to let us know what the number is. And that is. we're up open for Saturday. We're open to Saturday. Yeah. And once they send the list down, that's the official final list. The information becomes public. So, uh, once it goes on the agenda, a and they notify the the applicants that you're a finalist. We're going to give your name to the selectmen, and so if you haven't told your boss that you've applied, this is now the time. And or, we're not going to know before that's put it. We won't. None of us will know who who makes that cut until until right. Yeah. Until I get the information from them, and once once I get the information from them, it's it's public. So. Well, it should all be quite interesting. Great. 
Yes, oh, and then, okay. then they also said they, they have questions that they will, MRI will attend the interviews and they will provide the board with questions if you want questions. They will also provide a list of questions you cannot answer. I cannot ask. ask. Okay. So um, oh. those, those. I, I do think we would like some questions, and even if we don't get have them giving us all of the questions, we do need to make sure each candidate is consistently being asked the same questions. We don't right. want to have one person asked one set of questions, another asked it. We've no. got to be consistent so that we're comparing apples to apples when we're doing the interviews. And historically, what what I would do is put a list of questions together. Everyone would be assigned two or three questions. However, uh, we go. And so every candidate gets the same We questions. did that with Graham, look how we made out. I know, didn't we? <laughs> You're our poster child. <laughs> we can't hire somebody good. You did a good job. That's <laughs> <laughs> so um, if, if, you have some, if you have questions that you would like to ask, if you could send them to me, I will send them to MRI and say, these are the questions I want to ask. Before we've had that happen, and I've looked at the question and said, no. You can't ask okay. that. Okay. And they will look at it and let us know whether you can ask the question or not. So. All right. We that sounds good. Cool. Moving forward. All right. We are on to the Hanover Fireworks discussion. Um, as you gentlemen are all aware, we had the session uh, last Wednesday evening at the Hanson Middle School where we had Mass DEP there. I'm, uh, the attendance was not what I had hoped for, but I was overly optimistic probably. Um, as per usual and um, nevertheless the people that attended I found the mass DEP to be extremely responsive to their needs we had uh, one woman who was concerned about her well water and they volunteered to test it they're not required to do that uh, another woman who had commented that her foundation was damaged as a result of the detonations that were happening and um, again, they volunteered to work with her and her insurance company and figure out who the responsible party would be to try to pay for that. Um, so to the person, anybody that sort of brought up concerns, they were um, very responsive. And um, you know, uh, we encouraged people to write in, uh, in with their public comments. Uh, the public comment period ends on October 25th, which is this week. Uh, which was why we had the session last week and why we've got it on the agenda tonight. Um, we had discussed very briefly um, that it would be perhaps a good idea for this board to take a vote uh, to send in as a board, as a united front, to uh, the Tetratech, who is the uh, licensed site professional doing the cleanup, who's collecting all the comments um, on, on for the Mass DEP. The comments will be used to effectuate the actual cleanup at the site. And so um, I thought we would perhaps talk about briefly what we wanted in the letter. Personally, I would like to ask them for a full and complete cleanup, which is called background. Um, so a cleanup to background. Um, at no cost to Hanson taxpayers or to the state taxpayers um, because they are currently in negotiations with the potentially responsible parties, uh, aka MIT, the Department of Defense, and others who clearly have deep pockets and who clearly benefited from doing work at the site and therefore should pay for the damage that's done at the site. Um, and more Healy, and Mass DEP are working with the potentially responsible parties, and they are um, they are aggressively negotiating with them, and they feel pretty hopeful they'll get enough money. But I, I just thought it would be important for us to put in the letter that we don't expect one dime of taxpayer money, um, whether it's state or local, to be spent on the cleanup. And anything other than that will be completely unacceptable. That's my position. I don't know if the rest of the board feels that way. I like it. Yeah, I don't have a position, but I, I like it. Yeah. Okay. So, Mary, do you feel like you could adequately craft a letter I'm to that sure effect? I'm sure I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Did you guys want to take? A, did, can, did we want to take a motion? I move to draft a letter to uh, recommend that we go back to a background um, state at the factory pond. Okay, great. Second. Um, all in favor? Okay, great. Thank you. 
All right, clipping right along, and we've got 10 minutes before we have our discussion. What else can we do? Uh, recommendation of Conservation Commission Administrative Assistant. Um, Mary, Town Administrative Report. Uh, you know that Becky Neely had retired. We separated her position prior, her to, prior to her departure. She had uh, held for several years a joint position as the Administrative Assistant to the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. And both of those boards have decided that it's probably not working since we now have two separate people as a, the town planner and the conservation agent. So with Becky's departure, I thought maybe this was the time to split it and you know to create the two two positions again. I checked with the with our labor council as well as the union representative, and they said that is a a, a management right to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I subsequently revised the job descriptions that were approved by the union as well and posted Becky's position internally for seven days and we got one internal candidate who had applied and that was uh, Lon Woodward from the Recreation oh, Commission. Okay. All right. She has attended conservation meetings. She has talked to Becky. I was hoping to have this uh, this position filled prior to Becky's departure but it just took a little bit longer with uh, with the union. So in light of the fact they have a meeting tonight, they were looking for someone to actually take minutes. So since we didn't have the position filled, I sent an email to all the union members to see if anybody was interested in doing the minutes. And Lon was the only one who responded. So she's actually at the meeting tonight taking minutes. We had an interview with Phil Clemens, the chairman, and Frank Scalinger with Lon today. And they're, they're pleased with with Lawn and feel that she'll be able to do a good job. There is some learning curve with respect to the language and in the lingo for conservation, but she's already has the foundation for the job. She does minutes, she knows soft rights, she understands open meeting law and postings, and she knows customer service, not just from the aspect of being at recreation, but prior to going to recreation, she had been the clerk in the treasure collector's office. So she knows how to deal with people who aren't always happy when they come to pay their taxes. So she's got a good uh, good foundation to start. So what is her effective date? Because of course I'm having heart palpitations thinking about the fact that we will not have the lovely and talented Lon working up at Camp Kiwani doing all the things Correct. So, so she will stay at the camp until the, the 12th of uh, November. So what I'll do is send an email out tomorrow letting the union know that, that Lon is now moving on to conservation to see if anybody is interested to apply internally. And if, and we've done this in the past, if no one was interested, they, the union would allow for a simultaneous posting internally as well as to the public so we can get somebody up at recreation sooner rather than later. Okay. So, and if we have an internal candidate, then we'll move forward and, and you know, do an interview and see if they've, you know, uh, they actually want to move up to, to that position since it is, it has to stay within the, union unit so it's just the uh, administrative professionals that get the internal posting first okay and then it goes out so just looking for the board's approval of my recommendation of hiring lawn for conservation i will so entertain motion. second all in favor okay um and let's take a stab at the one day liquor licenses so i've got three minutes um so we've we typically don't read them all out because some of them are surprises. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. And we can also approve the uh, minutes of October 15th, uh, both regular and executive, with executive not to be released. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are going to be tabled. Oh, they're being tabled. Okay. Okay. I could do a town administrator's report to allow in gets here. Go. I'm, sure. I would love it. <laughs> That's fabulous. All right. So going along with personnel matters, we've got conservation already wrapped up. Um, again, posting recreation. The planning administrative assistant, that position was also posted internally. No one applied for that. So now that has been posted uh, out to the public, and the deadline for that is November 15th. The highway director position, the, the deadline for that was Friday, October 18th. We received five applications. I've given copies to Kurt, and Kurt's going to review them, and then we'll conduct interviews hopefully next week. And I just want to see if there's anybody on the board who wishes to participate in the uh, interviews. Anybody interested in being part of that process? 
It's Do you know what they're going to be? It's very important. I don't, um, but we can we can set them up to accommodate whoever is going to join us. Yeah, I'd probably want to be involved. Mr. Bloss? I'll be involved. Okay, great. Okay, so we can't we just we just need one. All right, so then you, why don't you do it then? I love it. Because I'm retired. Have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for stepping up. Uh, can I just ask, though, how that process goes? Because I will just say publicly, I have said this to several people here, that I have been on one hiring board. And the candidate we chose, I chose, that I said was great in interviews. And I'll stop right there. <laughs> Ended catastrophic. Ended well, catastrophically. <laughs> so I am so not. So you learned <laughs> lessons. I'm not sure what I learned. You learned lessons. I'm you not learned. sure what I learned. Okay. Well, well, the process is um, that it's the town administrator makes a recommendation to the relevant body, and in this case, it's the board of selectmen. So, and historically, when positions become available, we include the department head in the in the hiring process and somebody from the board. And in this case, it's this board. So, you know, so Kurt, collect, collect, Kurt, yeah, Kurt, Kurt was Kurt's willing to, back, yeah. to um, and Kurt's the guy to be doing it. You know, he knows what, right. what we need. So between the three of us, we could come up with somebody that. So you, know, you can't fail is what she's telling you. Yeah. Well, well, you, you, you won't fail alone. How's that? <laughs> I didn't fail alone the last time, but it was still failure. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Um, the health agent, we're getting closer to a health agent. The deadline for that was last Friday. We received two applications, and Arlene and I will sit down uh, with the applicants and move forward on that. So I will be making a recommendation after Arlene and I uh, sit down to the Board of Health, and then the Board of Health will have to, you know, either affirm my recommendation or say they want somebody else. That's uh, extremely important position. I, it's I know, so and, and it's been vacant, you know, much too long, and it's been a burden on the town. It's been a burden on, you know, the staff up there too it's it's been tough and she's held her own she's done great the supportive daycare coordinator at the senior center that position again we posted internally townwide and nobody has applied for it it's it's you need to have some alzheimer's experience so it was it was pretty narrow so the application for that is uh the final applications are due uh, next monday so we have um two at least two applications two. so far Sometimes people wait until the last minute, so I'm hoping we'll get a few more. Uh, Mary will work with me on that uh, that hire. Uh, today I sent out the budget and capital improvement um, messages that the both the budgets and um, capital improvement plans are going to be due on November 20, Friday, November 22nd. So that's gone to all departments and anybody who has a budget or capital improvement plan that's gone out. I have a meeting scheduled for this Thursday to discuss the boiler replacement at the Indian Head School. I'll be doing that with um, uh, Ernie. We'll be coming. Deb Petty has been working on that because the funding we got from that is through the Green Communities Act, so it's about the type of uh, uh, unit we're actually putting in there. Bob Curran's going to participate. The uh, plumbing inspector will be there, so we'll just kind of get that wrapped up. It's, I'd like to see that move forward before I leave. I've sent an email out for, to set up a meeting for next Tuesday, the 29th, with um, the McQuan Reuse Committee and Keller Williams. The cell tower hearing is scheduled for the 12th. I've already mentioned that, that the Verizon is looking to move the tower 100 feet south. I've sent off the information to town council for them to review the lease because if, in fact, ZBA approves that location, the lease will have to be amended. <coughs> only the addendum in it that actually shows where the siting is. But once that's done, we'll have to bring it to the, the school district and have them, you know, sign on board for that as well. The generator, the generator is there. The gas company has a moratorium because of things that happened up in Merrimack Valley. Bob Curran actually sent an email out to them today that says, does this really affect our generator? Can we maybe get this done? So... We're working on because I've seen their trucks around, and I yeah. feel like so, they're some doing things, their some own things thing I said they there. could be doing, yeah. but some projects not so much. Uh, a reminder to the residents who receive the senior center survey: people over fifty received it, so it doesn't really mean you're a senior, but you're getting close. So if you got a survey, there we would like to have them back by the 
uh, October 31st. We've put a link up on the website, on the home page, as well as on the uh, Council of Aging page. It just says Senior um, Community Survey, COA Community Survey. You can fill out the eight-page document and send it to them, or for the tech-savvy people, you can actually do Survey Monkey, which there's a link to that, and you can fill it out online. And the street light survey, we got the funding through the Green Communities Act, uh, has been completed. I've given it to the Energy Committee to review, and one of the members is very excited to be going through it. So, I which member that is? Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, he was he was even more excited when I told him how much it cost. So it was only twenty seven hundred dollars, but we had gotten the funding through Green Communities Act. So it's a very comprehensive report, and we'll be able to move forward with. Uh, the original plan was maybe to own, take over all the streetlights. And then Mr. McHugh had, after speaking to National Grid, decided maybe that's a little bit too much to bite off right now. So with the survey, we'll be able to give this information to National Grid. We can compare it to what was on their list, and then they would be willing to redo the lights by putting in LEDs, something more energy efficient. So we'll get some savings there. And the last thing I have is the recall bill, the recall bylaw that has been out there for a while has finally gone through all the processes in the legislature and is now on the governor's desk to be signed. So we should be getting that back relatively soon. Okay. That's been quite a process. Um, okay. That's it. That's all I have. Well, that brings us up to five past eight. So pardon our lack of punctuality on that. Um, okay. Uh, so we are in a hearing, and is there language I should be reading for that? No, this is just a joint meeting between the uh, Board of Selectmen and the... Um, okay, so as everybody may or may not be aware, uh, Mr. Amato tendered his resignation from the Board of Health, I'd say a month ago, Arlene, give it to him, um, which leaves a vacancy on this extremely important board. Uh, the election for this position will not be until the May town election. Um, and as a result, we are now moving forward with what is the protocol to replace that position, which is a joint appointment uh, by the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen. And that is why we have got the two members of the Board of Health, Arlene Diaz and Dennis O'Connell here. Thank you for coming. Did you guys already call your meeting to order? So that you can take a vote? No, no because I just came in. All right, well, if you just want to take care of that little formality, we can jump right into it. Okay, we'll call it to order. 806. Okay, great. Um, so we have got uh, two candidates, uh, Kevin Perkins, 137 Lakeside Road, and Joseph Weeks, 83 Hancock Street, who have applied for the position. And if nobody objects, I thought we'd just give you guys uh, like five minutes or less uh, to tell us a little about you, maybe why you're interested, that type of thing. We can start with you, Mr. Perkins. Sure. Kevin Perkins, 137 Lakeside Road, um, lifelong resident of Hanson. I am a master licensed electrician. And over the years of doing electrical contracting work, I've been in kitchens, I've been in grocery stores. I've seen a lot of behind the scenes, you know, things that are health concern and things that I don't want to see go on in my town. I want to see it nice and clean for everyone that eats around here, that lives around here. Um, I'm also a licensed builder. I have my construction supervisor license, so I see a lot of construction aspects in every trade. Um, I've actually assisted in installation of septic systems. Um, I wire pump systems in my trade as well. Um, I'm very familiar with Title V requirements, well regulations, um, innovative alternative systems that are installed. Just um, kind of just well-rounded. I'm on the, a current member on the Zoning Board of Appeals as well. Um, so I'm familiar with the variance process and what you can achieve by working with an applicant and the overall outcome of just reducing nonconformities, um, increasing setbacks and just overall improvement on existing um, existing hazards or potential hazards where there's a lot of, you have a lot of systems around town that are probably in failure that haven't had a Title V inspection and when it comes time to to improve them, that you know, that's what you got to do and you need people that are knowledgeable on your board and sees the, you see these things out in the field. Just because something looks good on paper, it doesn't always necessarily work outside on the field. So I think I'd be a good um, benefit to the board 
And uh, that's about it. Okay, well thank you, we appreciate sure. that. Mr. Weeks. Hi, I'm Joe Weeks, 83 Hancock Street. Um, also, uh, very interested in the board. I, uh, I'm a licensed mental health counselor, and I want to bring a different type of uh, perspective to the board. I have multiple backgrounds in various settings. Uh, the first is in just behavioral health and mental health just in general. I've been doing that for about 15 years. I oversee uh, a major nonprofit organization that works with film, children and families. And I like to be, essentially work in that aspect. Um, from a building perspective, I was a, on the um, the planning board for five years and I was the chair of the planning board for two of those years and we had various working relationships with the various boards and I'm pretty familiar with the codes and regulations that exist within those boards. Um, I was also on the housing authority for six years uh, doing that, um, looking at just various regulations associated with that as well. Um, we've also had to do multiple projects related to the entire housing system uh, and the makeup of that as well and I've also done the capital improvement committee, oh as the chair of the um, the Housing Authority for two years as well. And I've been on the Capital Improvement Committee for about, I want to say eight years. At this point, it's all kind of blending together, so I really don't know anymore. Um, so I want to bring all of that uh, experience to the board. I also am very passionate about the issues. I, I do recognize and I've been watching a lot of the selected meetings at home over the years. And I do know it's a, a pretty paramount issue to get a health agent, and I want to be part of that aspect. I've, I've heard Mr. Dyer and Ms. Hemet specifically talk about those issues as being of major importance to them. With a two-person board, I think it's important to have three folks on there. I'm also very interested in the transfer station as well. In fact, we talked about it a little bit at the town hall. And I feel like I can give some level of expertise and experience to that as well. I've been following it since the adoption of the transfer station with the bad regulations, and I've been following it pretty closely. And I'd like to be able to bring that experience to those positions uh, in, in some way, shape, or form. I've helped hire um, with the, uh, and put together the town planner position uh, when we had Laurie unfortunately leave. I've also been on the hiring committee that oversaw the hiring of the executive director for the housing authority, not once, but unfortunately twice uh, in two very different capacities. So I like to bring my hiring background as well to the board if I can, uh, if they find that of use, and if you find that of use. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Dennis and Arlene, I'm not sure if you guys want to make a motion and do your thing or What do we have to do? Make a motion? Make an motion to appoint one of these gentlemen. I mean, can we, uh, I just, I, can I we just we ask some questions too? So, well, yeah. yeah. Sure. Can we sure. have them do that first? Yeah. Feel <coughs> free. Yep. All right. I mean, actually, so I did notice, first of all, in our packet, we have a, some, a big uh, conflict of interest on the Zoning Board of Appeals, which is Kevin. Is that, I mean, I've read through it. Yeah. It, it just it, I didn't see, I mean there's nothing in here that, that it just says that the state doesn't think that that's a conflict of interest okay that, I mean I saw nothing in here when I read it like no. is there no. something I'm missing in here so there is no okay there's no conflict of interest no I think that uh, I think Mary may have mentioned it it's unusual to have somebody from ZBA be on another board because ZBA has got so is so empowered to make decisions mm -hmm. that it can be tricky if you have somebody on another board that's also making decisions like about septics so I think Mary had out of abundance of caution said to him you might want to just get this checked so he did oh so he got it okay yeah. I mean yeah. then I, a second question because the both of you know I either one of you I am perfectly fine with but I just noticed just on dates that Kevin applied September 9th for this position. We are now, it's October 20th, and Joe applied on October 9th, maybe? So a, a month later. I'm just wondering why we have not, we, why we have sat on this for over a month, and it's only happening now. Did we vote to table this appointment We voted point? to um, extend the, oh, the deadline because um, Ms. D has only had one applicant, and she didn't want to just have one applicant. Oh, okay. So we tried to open it up and hoped we'd have an abundance of applicants, but we didn't. No offense to you, too. We were no, thrilled no. that you applied. We've got, you know. we got two excellent yeah. applicants. That's, yeah. that's not an issue. I just, it was like, all right, Kevin, that was a long time ago now. Was the only one would it still be sitting there? That's a good question. So, um, to, 
Did you guys have any questions? I guess my question would be three, Ms. Chair, would be what would you individually, what would you guys, what's something that you would like to change on the Board of Health? Or <coughs> have you seen any problems that you would like to overcome? What, what, what are some of your missions or passions that you'd like to change? Or accomplish, how about it? Or accomplish, yeah. Well, obviously we need a health agent. That, that would be the first thing. Um, seeing things like what you see on Facebook with Dunkin' Donuts, I'm sure everyone all saw that. You know, There's a lot more of that, I'm sure, around town. And like I said, I see a lot of it working behind the scenes, working in kitchens, working in restaurants. A lot of stuff that people don't know that goes on that you know, we should really get behind the scenes and make sure that's not going on in Hanson. We have no power outside of Hanson, but we should make sure that that's not happening in our town anyway. And we should definitely just try to overall make it a better, better town for everyone to live in. Just to clarify, Mr. Perkins, you're not suggesting that this horrific thing's happening behind the scenes in Hanson and all Not in Hanson, but okay, I just, just I'm, wanna, I'm, no, okay. I'm not saying that okay. there is, yeah. but I think that yeah. we should go peeking behind doors yeah, and make sure I got you. Not, to verify that there's not. Okay. Because um, I have seen a lot of just really unsanitary conditions. I'm sure you have, yeah. Um, and then um, this gentleman had mentioned that obviously the transfer station, we got to do some work there. And um, the other thing too, like we were talking about, just um, Title V issues that we have, um, well regulations, whatnot, and um, it's just it's a it's a public health thing that you got to make sure that you take everything into consideration with you know because especially down in Lake Montpensier, you have that area is and it was put in so long ago that you have water lines you don't know where they are, you have. I believe there are still some houses on wells down there, and then you have that aren't documented as well. And you're putting in septic systems here and there, and what we should start looking at more is, um, technology's really caught up in Title V too, and there's, there's treatment systems that you can actually put in now too. So you're, you're pre-treating this before it's actually going back into the, into the ground. Um, so you can get a nitrogen reduction on it, and it just it allows it to be, it's almost like a small sewage treatment plant, and it replaces your septic tank. And in situations like that where someone's requesting a variance that we could have them upgrade to a system like that to just overall improve what we're putting back into the ground. Um, yeah. Mr. Weeks? Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think that there's a lot of things that we can do. I think for me, I'm pretty passionate about A, getting a health agent because it's hard to do any of these things without somebody to go on the ground and be able to check some of these things. My time on the planning board, that's one of the major things that we did when I became chair. We legitimately just went out with the town planner and started pulling up sewer caps, for example, and checking street roads and making sure uh, the sidewalks are the way they were supposed to be and making sure the jobs got done appropriately. And I can assure you uh, that a good chunk of the time they actually weren't. So it was a great idea to be able to go out there and hold people accountable to the high standards that handsome residents deserve and, and need. So I think that's the biggest, the biggest hurdle. Um, I'm also incredibly passionate about the transfer station in general. I think it was made loud and clear that we have some issues coming up and I'm pretty passionate about the direction that the transfer station is going to go in general in whatever way, shape or form that's going to take. But I would really like to be part of that conversation and, um, and, and be involved in, in a more intimate way. Um, I do think that you know, we can be, and I think the Board of Health does a good job, but I, I definitely want to continue to maintain a high level of standard and proactive uh, oversight that such an important department really needs. So I concur with everything you're saying, and I think that, um, you know, I think we need to be proactive in, in, in doing so. Did you, um, oh, I, get, oh <coughs> this, <coughs> Mr. Hayes had a question. Okay. Oh, she knew. Oh, okay. No, I just want to make it clear that we have an inspector that does all of the health inspections, they're all up to date, and there are no issues so that people don't believe that there are um, things happening in Hanson that aren't being addressed. I think that's why I had asked yes, Mr. Perkins to clarify. I think he was just saying in general, his experience in general, not like specifically right. like, oh, oh right. God, the but, things in Hanson. But, but Facebook yeah. will say tomorrow. Right? That's why I clarified <laughs> that. <laughs> I understand. And we have, uh, we have an inspector that does all of our inspections, and they're up to date, mm -hmm. and there have not been any issues that have done un gone unnoticed or unresolved. That's good to know. Thank you for verifying that. Yes, Mr. Hayes. My question is just a point of, of order in the fact of you have two good guys, both sound very qualified. One of them's not going to get an appointment. Is there an alternate position? 
Did you have an alternate? No, no, I, no, I didn't think they did. They have an alternate for CBA, but I um, just asked and it's I, when you this get very good yeah. volunteers. Yep. I think it's conservation's like, got an alternate. CBA's got them. an alternate. Most of the planning um, type, you know, the land use boards just have got. Yeah. No, it's, you a, it's, some perfect it's a legitimate. Uh, it's a legitimate uh, question. Um, Dennis, any questions? I have a question. Um, I was under the impression that we voted together. Uh, that's what we did with the water commissioners when we made an appointment. We, we do voted. vote together, but it's it's se it's that separate. In other words, <coughs> it's it's. Um, so you make a nomination. You make a nomination for for one of the candidates, well, and right. then you we guys vote. Then the board make a nomination to you. Uh, and no, then you, we vote no. jointly. Yeah, and if they concur, if the board second concurs, then everybody you know moves forward with the vote. Right. So there there will, there will be a joint vote by both boards. Yeah. So it is together. It's just, you know, so instead of it. So the, it's for us to decide the candidate? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's roll Isn't that call. Cute? Yeah. It's a roll call vote, but the, we usually that the committee that's short a member make the first, you know, nomination and then move forward. Okay. Mary. Mr. Can Rogers, you did you have something you want? Oh, okay. okay. Do we have the date that oh, Gil was signed? Okay. I just went through all our sheets mm -hmm. up until June, and I can't find the date. Well, because he didn't, I, he doesn't resign to us. He resigns to the Board of Health because right. he doesn't right. into the town clerk. So was yeah. it? The, I believe it was the twenty fifth of August. Twenty fifth or twenty sixth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we didn't we didn't discuss it because he, he, he no, didn't. not that we would discuss yeah. it, but it always goes here. Um, Oh, only on the if, appointments and resignations. Only if it's a resignation on a board that we you appoint. appointed the person. Okay. Yeah. He do, be, this is just a weird situation because he's he's a he's an elected official, but he resigned in that position, and so now that's why we're having this. And I think I mentioned as part of one of my reports that the it, that we have a vacancy did. on the board of health, but we I didn't have to vote. Just couldn't find it on our yeah. cover sheet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did, yeah, uh, Mr. Uh, oh, I, I had another question. Uh, so with time management and time commitment, are you both able to make it to your, I don't know if you guys would be changing your meetings to accommodate everyone or whatnot, but I just was curious on time commitment, because um, I know you guys are both involved in the community, in your private lives. Are you guys able to make a weekly or bi-weekly meeting um, for, you know, uh, and commitment to the community? Ms. Diaz. And I will say that we meet once a month. Once a month. And okay. it's usually like an hour and a half. Maximum and you have hours. said you're going to change it from 4:30, which, by the way, most yeah. working adults could not do. It, you um, know what? That to was a later more for time. Engineers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have been told that by people. Uh, through you, Mrs. Chair, uh, to answer your question, yes, I'll make whatever commitments necessary. Mm -hmm. And finally, Mr. Mitchell. I have another question. You're just yeah, all so of them tonight, huh? I'm just trying to I make know. a good decision. I'm going to ask right. my question right now. So, um, and do you, either one of you have intentions to run in May? No, you have to run for the position to oh, maintain to the position. Yes. To run yeah. for the position, yes. yes. Oh, yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, it's a position I'd like to... Presumably, if it's... If if it's not a painful experience during this time, then you're asking if are we going to be on you gotta, six yeah. months? Are you pulling papers? It expires. Yeah. Right. The term for this position right. expires in May. So it's a fair question. I think that honestly, with the, the some of the projects that I want to try and get done, are going to take longer than six months just in general. So I want to be part of that process in whatever capacity I can. And if this is the best fit to get some of those projects done, I absolutely am going to make a commitment to do that. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, the only thing, reading, I agree with Mr. Gloss, two great candidates. Um, after hearing both of them and reading both of them, I'd like to make a nomination for Kevin Perkins. Second. Yeah. Um, That's just based on, like I said, what I'm hearing, what I'm reading. I think he's a little bit more experienced in this. But we, uh, maybe you missed the part where these guys are supposed to make the nomination. Oh, the Board of okay. Health is supposed to make the nomination. Oh, all right. You vote on our yeah. I apologize. I was a parent. It is a little. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Confused. We don't do this a lot. I know. <laughs> yeah. And we're glad that you don't do it a lot. <laughs>
Do your survey, please. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm 50 and I did get it. I'm not happy about it. You got a uh, yeah, Me too. I didn't get it. <laughs> you didn't get it, Joe? Okay. Um, I'll nominate Joe Weeks. Is there a second? I'll second, <laughs> I'll second the nomination. Okay. All in favor of Joe Weeks? All in favor. Okay. No, that's that's a roll call vote. I'm sorry. So, sorry. I, I was writing. Oh, sorry. Okay. So it was really, you both voted? Yes. Okay. And, and just to clarify, I think you're both extremely talented. I'm very concerned about the marrying of the Board of Health with the ZBA. I think that the ZBA already has a tremendous amount of discretion, and I'm extremely concerned at the prospect, and it's no offense to you, Mr. Perkins, it, it would be anybody sitting there, um, at the prospect of having somebody who's able to uh, make uh, determinations about septics and ZBA. It is a um, potential recipe for disaster um, if not monitored extremely closely. Um, um, and and, and that's, that's really where I'm coming from in that. And again, it's no offense to Mr. Perkins. I'm just, I'm laughing. Would, this, would we be in a different position in all these easements at town meeting on septic that are across the streets on other places if we, I mean, what is worth sometimes a little coordination is not a bad thing. I'm, I'm not this I'm not talking about coordination. Okay. And I think that easement issue is something that was left over from the Board of Health from way back. Yes. I mean, it had nothing to do with the Board of Selectmen. From oh, what no, I was I told. Yeah. yeah. No, no. But Duly yeah. noted. Okay, so um Mary, what so so now you'd be voting on the nomination that the um Board of Health just voted. Well we just so. I thought we just did. Oh, roll call. No, you, you have to do, a, the board of selectmen has to do a roll call on Mr. Weeks. Okay. Okay. Uh, roll call. Can, I mean. So you have to say nay or yay. Uh, I'm going to say nay, but I will resign from the board of selectmen, Joe. Right now, if that, if we could appoint Joe <laughs> and put him on my place, I would gladly do that. Nay. Nay. I would also do the same. I would say, I would say yes. Um, good question. Okay. So it's so. three, four. So it's Mr. Perk. Well, that motion didn't carry. Correct. So now Kenny can make a motion? Uh, yes. Okay, now you can make your I motion. I have a question. I have a question. Um, at what point? I have concerns. Um, I, I, issues. I think, uh, Mary, you know what the discussion is, and I'm not sure whether how this should be discussed with the rest well, of the board. It, it, she can cite a minor if she has an issue. Oh, yep. Okay. I, I have really do have concerns um, because of an issue that um, happened about five or six months ago that, that makes me concerned about ethical issues with Mr. Perkins being on the board. I think you need to give a little more detail. It was regarding a property where a perk was requested, but because the property had taxes that were owed, we don't give out, um, we won't do permits. The taxes have to be paid. Um, so there was some skirting of the bylaws because the bylaw at the time was, it still is, you have to pay the taxes on the property. So you can't perk a property unless it's up to date on taxes. You can't taxes. get the permit to perk the property Which makes unless sense. the taxes are up yeah. to date. And on this particular piece of property, it wasn't. It was a transition, it was a sale, and I'm sure the attempt was to perk it to make sure that it perked before the per it was purchased. Um, a couple of people, three or four people got together and made a plan and they perked it privately uh, without coming through the Board of Health to purchase the property. Is that illegal? I don't think no. Town Council said you could do a private park. But the way that it was handled makes me concerned. He did not own the property at the time. He was making an offer on the property and wanted to make hedge his bets by doing a park test before he bought it. And so he circumvented the Board of Health. And what Arlene's issue is, is now this gentleman is joining the Board of Health after he circumvented Every the Every meeting we have, we're looking for 20 volunteers for committees and yeah. boards. We have a volunteer sitting in front of us You've got two in, volunteers. Oh, that two volunteers, yeah. I apologize. That one of them put his application in 
you know, over a month ago, and, and we're sitting here arguing about whether he should be on there. Well, I, I do want to remind you I'm the chair, okay. so I don't have a Madam floor. Chair, may that, I have the floor fine. for one yep. minute? Go ahead. Last week we tabled this because there was one applicant. Joe, this is nothing against you, but last Tuesday night was October 15th. We had one applicant, according to Madam Chair. Your application says you filled this out on the 10th, five days before our meeting which we tabled this because we only had the one applicant, which we've had for a month. So, in full disclosure, I'm a little ticked off that Joe filled his application out five days, but we tabled it because we only had one. I want full transparency I don't on know this. when we got the application. Now, if when Kevin did, did something it? that he wasn't supposed to, but our legal counsel said it was legal, then I'm fine with that. I just want to put one thing up. After I purchased the property, we scheduled the perk test and went out and did a perk test after the fact. So this perk test that she's discussing over here, with um, that, that was an informal perk test. They didn't want to issue the permit. There was taxes owed on the property that I was purchasing. However, I wasn't going to pay the taxes on the property. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So after I closed on the property, the taxes were paid, and then I scheduled the perk test. We went out and did a perk test, and everything was designed by an engineer the way it's supposed to be. It was just, you wouldn't want to pay money on someone's taxes on the property you don't own, right? You're not going to pay someone else's taxes. So we tried to schedule a perk test. They wouldn't allow it because it was taxes out on the property. There was no skirting of any rules. There was no skirting of anything. It was as simple as I wanted to know the soil was good in the ground and what I was buying and what I was buying into. I wanted to make sure I could put a replacement septic system in before I bought this property. That's all I was trying to do. And they, they didn't allow it and didn't want to issue a permit on it. So we, we had gone out there and we dug a test hole just to see what the soils were. It was, it was documented by us privately and it wasn't documented by the Board of Health and they wouldn't accept it. So we went out after I bought it and we did a legitimate perk test. Okay, there was so no bending of the rules. There was nothing done illegitimately. That's how we did it. said he didn't own the property. If he owned the property, that would be different. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I wasn't the owner of the property. No money taxes. Taxes. These are regulations that all other home owner, <laughs> all, of, all other people wanting to buy property follow. Um, and so she was concerned that this is somebody who's asking to be on the Board of Health and, and already, you know, there's a feeling like maybe that this person isn't compliant. But I, I, I want to get back to what your concern is because I don't think I fully understand what you're saying. Are you, I, I, I'm trying to wrap my mind around what your concern is and I can't... Mine? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had one applicant last week with 15. That was Kevin Perkins. Right. I did not know it was Kevin Perkins. I knew we had one applicant. Joe's application is filled out five days before last week's meeting. So you're saying we should have said we had two? Yeah. I would say. Did we have two at that time? And then we wouldn't have tabled it. You said last week that we're tabling it because we only had one applicant no. and the Board of Health wanted to give it another week. I'm sorry? It's a conspiracy. No, he's saying, saying, saying that he thinks we might have had two applicants. What difference does it make if it was? Mr. Weeks, when did you submit your application? It was brought to a vote last week. This week. week. So I'm I don't get. Off. I don't get what your point is. What's What's the date on it? The tenth. The tenth. So the reason why I put the application it was because of the town meeting and all these issues that were popping up. To realizing the vacancy on the board of health, I went in to make sure that it was actually put in, and I went to speak. And I think you had said that you were on vacation or something like that. That's, Something that's like correct. that. He, that's the only reason why. He had, he had sent the application in. It got uh, while I was on oh, vacation. It got it got yeah. caught up in yeah. my spam. So when I got back from vacation on the 14th, I was able to bring it up and I started. Maybe it was even the day it a day later like that. after that that I actually saw it. But okay. they, they had already tabled it at the time. You the board wasn't aware that we had two applicants because it didn't come through my email. Yeah. So. He, he had submitted it on the date that, he, that it's dated, and, but I didn't get it because I wasn't here. Mr. Weeks. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm sorry. Um, so I did double check it, and the reason why I came in to double check it was because I was concerned that it wasn't going to be acknowledged because a lot of the stuff that I get, it just ends up going to spam. So I walked in and just said, do you happen to have that because I didn't get any confirmation when received my application. Can someone confirm it? And then she said, I'm on vacation. I was on vacation, just got back. Well, it's a good thing you did, because okay. we never would have. So that clears that up. I'd like to make a motion That's to fine. appoint Kevin Perkins to the Second. Board of Health. All in favor? Roll call. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. 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 Board of Health? 
Nay. Nay. Right. So it would be a four to three vote? Yep. For Kevin Perkins? Yes. Okay. Thank you both for putting your application. Thanks. Joe, really. That's all good. Oh, I'm Thank you. Okay. Um, you. On to the other issue that we've got the Board of Health here for. Is Mr. Oh, is Mr. O'Connell staying? Dennis staying? Oh. For Lost complete control of this meeting. Okay. Um, uh, no, we're moving on to discussion regarding field closures. Um, but let's just wait until we get Ms. Diaz and Mr. O'Connell back. We could talk about Mr. Gloss's book that he made Paul Carroll a uh, <laughs> character. I don't know what you can look with him after that. I promoted him to the superintendency. Yeah. <laughs> Carroll's head was big enough. I uh, comment on the generator. Who's the best? Yeah. You guys know how long we're going to be waiting for gasoline? We do. Because a possible option would be just for temporarily so you can use it, would be to possibly use liquid propane to conversion on it instead okay. of natural gas. Maybe something that we can do rather than have the generator that's spread and useless. Yeah, we're just, we're just waiting for the line to come from the street to the, right. to the but generator. Right, if, if that's so, not going to happen until. Right. We'd have to get checking. For it. We'll yeah. ho Bob? Hopefully they'll say, hopefully they'll say they'll hook us up. But. I'll check with Bob on that. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you for joining us again. Okay. So um, we want to talk about the discussion regarding field closures. And just to give you guys a little bit of background, um, as you know, back in late August, I believe, we mm -hmm. the, this board voted to impose a restriction um, on the the uh, fields in Hanson, which included the high school. And uh, recently, Mr. Rogers has reached out as the athletic director for the school district um, and asked that we revisit this. Now, I will say that ordinarily, I would have had the school committee um, take a vote because it is a school policy issue and ask us to revisit a vote um, but I don't think I need to get into details for a variety of reasons. They have not been meeting um, and have not had a meeting since Mr. Rogers has asked for this to be revisited. So I met with Arlene, um, Diaz, uh, Bob Rogers, Bob Hayes, and Mary on Friday to discuss a path forward in which we could um, talk to Mr. Rogers about his request while simultaneously including the Board of Health, who properly should be the authority making the decisions about the failed closures. And that brings us to where we are now. So I know Arlene and Mr. Rogers, you, I think, were right. supposed to talk to DPH. Yes. And Okay, so do you want to tell us what happened there? <clears throat> DPH, DPH is, their rule is still the same, which is what my recommendation was not closing the fields. Um, right now, the, we talked with them today, and if the temperature drops below 50, it slows down mosquito population, but we won't be rid of the mosquito population unless we've had a hard frost, which they consider two hours at 28 degrees or lower, or three hours at 32. So that people, because Hansen is moderate and it's not high risk, people should just do protective personal protective, long sleeves, long pants, and repellent. They're not suggesting that we should close our fields, and anyone, any town that's at moderate risk, it's not suggesting. Okay, it's so, not part of their protocol. So, just to be clear, because I have had some um, suggest to me that we've had positive testings in Hanson for Triple E, so the mosquitoes that are trapped, we've had, well, the, this person told me three. Um, and that there's also been some in Whitman and surrounding towns and, you know, and obviously mosquitoes don't know town boundaries, right? So, you know, there's been mosquitoes in surrounding I, I towns. I understand that, but as far as uh, I know, there's only been one positive testing. Okay. I, I'll defer to you. You are the Board of Health. And um, I'm sure the state would have reported it to us if we were going to be a And also risk. West Nile virus. There was a report of West Nile virus. So I just, but yes. not, in, not as far as I know, not in Plymouth County. 
Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I have gotten different information. So, yes, Mr. Rogers. So, I know people were not happy with the vote the board took, but I supported it at the time, actually, and I, I don't know if any of you follow me on Twitter, just in terms of uh, this board was making a decision based on a lot of cases of AAA, AAA throughout the state. Well, I want to stop you there. I know you've told me people weren't happy, and Mr. Mitchell has had some people tell him that they were not happy. I, on the other hand, have had an overwhelming number of mothers coming up to me saying, thank God you did this. And I think it may be the age differences. It is um, you know, for the younger guys, p parents were very, very happy to not be the bad guy and, in the heavy. And, you know, truthfully, they're at more risk anyway, 12 and under and 50 and over. I, I didn't like getting the survey of being a senior citizen either. <laughs> um, but that's the reality. 12 and under, 50 and over are more susceptible to Triple E. Um, so those parents, and they also were on a grass field. Um, those, some of those parents, I think, and obviously you're, you're, the, the safety of your child is really important. And when you're late August, early September, mosquitoes are very active, dust to dawn, very common. As you get into the colder months, mid-September, early October, mid-October, mosquitoes cannot fly below 50 degrees. When, they, when it's below 50 degrees, they will not fly. Uh, today, um, uh, Brandy Hopkins from DPH told us actually 60 and below, they really have difficulty flying. Uh, I've also been in contact with Dr. Tanya Kolpitz from Boston University, uh, and she gave me some really interesting information was that actually as you get into October, the only mosquitoes that ever uh, bite are female mosquitoes, and they only bite because they're trying, I've become a mosquito expert on this, but they only bite because for laying their eggs. And as they get into October, if they do have the strength to bite, which most do not at that point, they actually prefer now to get away from blood, and they actually go for sugar. So they go for rotting fruits and things of that nature to get um, stronger for the winter. So mosquitoes, even if you saw any, which we don't see any at the high school at all, so we don't see them there. Um, if they were there, they would most likely be going for rotting fruit. And if you do see them there, they most likely would not be active at 6 o'clock and later because they do not fly when it's below 50 degrees. Uh, now, there is a species of mosquito, which unfortunately for my argument here, um, is one of the mosquitoes that does carry triple E. They more have a circadian rhythm, which means they... Uh, they are not as temperature sensitive in terms of when they're active. They still won't fly below 50 degrees, but they, other mosquitoes actually hide. If it's too hot, they hide. If it's too cold, they hide, and they come out when the temperature is just right. So if you did have mosquitoes, there's a possibility. I, somebody told me yesterday that they had one in their backyard at 3 o'clock in the afternoon because the temperature is good for them at that point, except for that other species wouldn't come out in the afternoon because of their circadian rhythm. So my point to the board is, when you made that original decision, uh, that's when we didn't have we didn't have mosquitoes really. We didn't see many around campus because we've had the spraying in the community. But that's when they would have had a chance to be active because the temperature was okay. At, at, when we were to have a night game at seven o'clock, for example, the temperature could be seventy degrees, sixty-five degrees. There is a possibility that you could have mosquitoes at that point. At this point in the year, in October, mid-October, there are no mosquitoes, and they cannot fly when it's below 50 degrees, and they're unlikely to fly when it's below 60. And if they do fly, they're more likely, and I have the article if you want to see it, it's from Harvard University that Dr. Cope had sent to me. Um, they're more likely to go for rotting fruit and sugars at that point anyway. They're not likely to um, go to bite human beings at that point. And I have to clarify that what he's saying to you is does not come from epidemiology at DPH. That, that information did not Doctor, come from that. That's from Dr. Tanya Kolpitz. So that was yeah. not the conversation no, we no, had no, no, today. No, 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 right, no. But, no but, but, but from our conversation today, she did tell both of she us. She said in under 60, they're less active. Less active. Not that they don't fly, but they don't fly. Okay, so right. what's no, active? Less, less active. Yes. And then below 50, they don't fly. So the reason that I asked you guys to be here yes. is because I want your informed decision as the Board of Health on what your perspective is on whether or not this restriction should still be imposed. And this is for the high school fields we're talking Just about. Just for the high school Just fields. For high school. After my, with my discussion with DPH, they did not feel that it was necessary to restrict outdoor activity um, because Hanson is only at moderate risk. Um, and that as long as people 
follow the guidelines that they've set up on their website with personal protective um, sprite repellents, long sleeves, uh, long pants, socks, that they would be at reduced risk. Um, but they absolutely would not have recommended that we close the fields. Okay. Did anybody have any questions for either of these folks? Mr. Did, Dyer. So we're talking a lot about temperature right now. And I'm looking at the forecast right now. Tomorrow, 66, 65, 63. Granted, that's the high of the day. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, too, you have to see my concern here, right? We're at mid-60s right now. And as if we don't get a hard frost going into November, and we're getting these 60-day degree days, the concern is still there, for me at least. We have Triple E here in our community. West Nile virus is on the rise. And I would feel horrible knowing that if I lifted the ban on our parks, that I contributed to enabling something along that lines. And you have to understand that all of our jobs in this room is the safety and the well-being of our students. So by taking this precaution, I think it's a good precaution to have. And um, yeah, that, that's where I'll leave it right uh, now. Uh, Mr. Hickey. Laura, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but um, I've listened to Mr. Rogers speak. I've also listened to Matt. Arlene was exactly right. When we put the band um, on, um, it wasn't recommended by the state because we were not at high risk. And what we're looking at tonight is just at the high school, the youth groups will not be playing. Right. No. That's right. What, yeah. They could uh, play at the high school. They could play at the high school, but that well, not. I want to make sure that I understand that. Well, that's a good point. Well, that's I'm, I'm here representing the high school um, with, again, the knowledge that 12 and under is at a greater risk than the, the high school students. I'm here to represent the high school. I do want to answer just Mr. Dyer's point because I think it's a good one because I wouldn't be sitting here advocating for this if I felt I was putting our students at greater risk. Everything we do, like in athletics, for example, football players wear helmets. And I know there was a, at your other meeting, which I didn't know was going to be discussed, somebody said I was mocking her by saying it's like wearing a seatbelt. Well, that was actually the analogy that um, the Boston University epidemiologist gave, uh, Dr. Colpitz gave, because you take precautions. Um, I was not mocking them. I didn't even know, to be honest, we didn't get a single phone call, not one parent complained, not one parent said, how come our kids are out here at night? Nobody <laughs> at the high school did that. We got one phone call asking how we make the decision. Nobody was, asking us to put a ban in. I wasn't mocking them. I have, since I've been the athletic director, every year around this time, I have always tweeted out, we're repellent. Because you could get Triple E. Um, uh, Kimberly King made a very big impact on me when I met her, and she lost her daughter. And it happened in our community. And, it's, and it had a big impact on me. So every year since I've been the AD, I've always tweeted out and sent out the precautions, we're repellent. We send it out to the coaches. I'll usually send an email to the parents to do that. I wasn't doing it because people were saying you're going to close the fields. I didn't even know this concern existed in our community that people were asking it. I was surprised that night. I would have been here to, to explain our position at the high school. I'm here, Mr. Dyer, when you said that, I completely understand that concern. But the reality of it is most of those mosquitoes, if they're going to be active, if they're anywhere at the field, they're going to be active at 4 o'clock in the afternoon because it's 65 degrees, 64 degrees in the afternoon, they're more likely to be active in the afternoon and they won't be active at night at seven o'clock when it's 50 degrees and 48 degrees, they'll be less likely. So in reality, a vote by this board to lift the ban for us would actually be um, a safer decision to make at that point. That's why I, haven't, that's why I wasn't here September 15th um, after you guys made it because I can't sit here in good conscience and tell you that it's left, that it is 100% safe. And I don't want to be here telling you um, lift it and then God forbid something bad happens and then I have to live with that for the rest of my life. If somebody gets bit, if God forbid somebody gets it in the next 15 days, which is highly unlikely, it would be most likely to be bitten at four o'clock in the afternoon, not at night. So I don't think that if God forbid it happened that this board or, or myself would be sitting there saying, gosh, I wish we didn't make that decision. Because in reality, they could could have happened at the bus stop, could have happened at recess, could have happened in the afternoon when they're more likely to be active. Did anybody else have any questions? Okay. Did you? Yeah. yeah. So my position is, I think it's it's always should have been a board of health decision. When we made that decision, 
I lived with it, and at the end I said, you know what, that was the right move to make mm-hmm. at that time. But right now we have the chair of the Board of Health telling us that the state's saying we're at a moderate level, it's not necessary to close the fields, and I think that we should open up the field to let the kids be able to finish the rest of their year. Just the high school. Just the high school. Yeah, yeah. Just the, high school age the high children. St- I think the high school field should be open. High school fields with high school aged children. That? Do younger kids ever go up to high school? They do. They do. They do. I don't know if they have any other uh, they may or may not. schedule because they're really turning the corner to, towards playoff time. Uh, not, that not, to, not that I'm not trying to advocate for them. Because I, I do believe it's safe for them to play at night. I, yeah. I do believe that in my heart. I believe it's safe. But the only thing I would say is that um, they have their whole life to continue to play at night if they wanted to play at night. Okay. Yeah, so, I don't know. I wouldn't put that restriction on there. I mean, even the football season, you're talking, it's three weeks, hazy, when's it end, middle of November? You're talking, I think I went to my nephew's game on Sunday. He's got one more game before the playoffs. He's in Plymouth. I, so, just, felt, I, I just felt like um, to those parents that came, and I did watch that meeting, and I did hear their concerns, and to me at this point, since, we, since you did act on their concerns, I would keep those validated through my own. This is my own opinion. I would keep it validated through this until we have a hard frost because you've already done it anyway. For the high school kids, I don't think it's the same. Be number one because of the risks that it's less likely for a high school kid to be susceptible to it, and that has to do with their immune system and um, the lack of uh, any activity at at our at our location. That's, that's so, that, again. I'm not telling you how to vote. I, I just want to comment on something that that Mr. Rogers mentioned during our meeting on Friday that in fact uh, they have the turf field and the mosquitoes won't go in the turf field. Because mm. of the, no. the whole moist lack of Right. Yeah. Not that there aren't mosquitoes in the woods as you walk into your car, but I'm just, you know, I, I thought that was a, a good point that he made, that and where the people be, are actually Just to changing. clarify a few things, Arlene had just come back from vacation. They hadn't been in a position to make a decision that night. And had we known that the discussion was going to go where it was, we certainly would have invited stakeholders. I've explained that to you, yes, and I've yes. explained it to Mr. Hayes and Mr. Simonek. Um, it certainly wasn't our intention, intention to be exclusionary, but we felt at the time that we had a compulsion, a moral compulsion, to act um, on what we thought was a, um, a situation that needed action. Um, and so I apologize for the expedience of, of it, but I don't apologize for making the decision because I still feel quite um, confident that at the time we made the right decision. I agree, um, absolutely. So um, I think what I'm hearing you say, Ms. Diaz, is you feel comfortable with lifting the restriction um, for the high school, for the high school age children. Right, and just reminding them that they should use um, repellent and they should be wearing protective clothing. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to wear long sleeves and long pants, but they should be using the pollen until we've had that first hot frost, which is probably not going to be until mid-November. And okay. then the threat is completely over. So I will entertain a motion. So in, moved. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor. Okay. All right. Um, so I guess we technically need to send something to the school telling them that, that and whomever else you sent it to, because I do want to make sure that people aren't thinking we're lifting the restrictions really nearly all over and the I, place. And I will adjust the posting on the website as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you guys for you sticking it you. out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Committee reports. I think we can whip right through this. Um, oh, do you guys need to meet? Uh, to, uh, do you need to, uh, need to vote adjourn. to adjourn? Just, yes. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. I second. Okay. All right. Well, it's been lovely having you here. Thank you very much. Good luck. Take care. Do you guys get many split votes? What? Do you guys get many split votes? Uh, no. No. <laughs> that wouldn't work. No. Because <laughs> you could make a motion, and I just would ignore it. No, not. <laughs> It's, um, a that's not it's a benevolent dictatorship. <laughs> I'm sure you mean that in a nice way. I am honest, but we don't work that way. Have a good evening. Yeah. All right, thanks, right, guys. Thank um, committee reports, uh, not much to report since last week on um, the uh, 200th. 
final Plymouth County Hospital reuse map? Uh, we're meeting tomorrow to continue um, uh, draft plans for the layout. And McQuan School reuse, I think next Tuesday we're meeting, mm -hmm. right, Mary? Yes. Yeah. Um, and highway building. And highway, not much. We did meet. Um, actually, I didn't meet. I wasn't there. But on the 16th, the engineer came, sat with um, some highway guys to work on um, their opinions and some things and had a few people in. They were in for about two or three hours. I couldn't make I thought I could make it, but I couldn't make it. So we're keep. We're and you're going to loop on. Kurt in on, on these going forward, I actually, right? that's funny you say that. Yeah. I actually spoke to Kurt uh, yesterday. Yesterday about it, and he said absolutely he would come to me, and so I'm gonna check with him, check his schedule, and absolutely loop him. Because I think that yeah. would be Just great to have his feet like oh, outside, outside of perspective. And it's funny because he in Hanover before he left, they just did a. Um, they just did a highway over there, smaller version. Yeah. But they did a highway oh, over wow. there, so okay. yeah. So he's very smart. Good. Kurt's very knowledgeable, so absolutely. And he said he was willing, no problem. He said even I told him I said we're at, sometimes it's half to five. He says I only live in Halifax. Wow. So good you know, attitude. No problem. Yeah. All right, so, that's good. Yeah, I that will was entertain. Good. Well, be, be, before Some we before we before oh, we adjourn, <laughs> we didn't do announcements and we had like a bunch of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what it was? We, I'm, I'm sitting here going, I'm so late in the game. I'm yeah. really, all right, here they go. You ready? Ready. Announcements. Everybody's sleeping now. <laughs> Reminder to all residents: the tax bills are due by noon on Friday, November first. The town offers various payment options, which include online by going to wwwhanson magovernor Click on P. Pay Bills Online on the home page. I, I signed it. Pay in person during regular business hours or after hours. Feel free to use the convenient drop box in front of town hall. Hanson Library, Public Library Foundation, will be hosting an author talk with best-selling author Jerry Thornton, who wrote From Darkness to Dynasty, The First 40 Years of the New England Patriots, on Friday, October 25th at 7 p.m. This free event requires pre-registration. Hey, I'm reading! <laughs> to register at the Hanson, go to hansonlibrary.org and sign up under calendar events. Email info at hansonlibrary.org or call 781 Two nine three two one five one. Recreation events. Cornhole tournament Sunday, October twenty sixth, from twelve thirty p.m. to four thirty p.m. and the second annual free Halloween extravaganza Sunday, October twenty seventh. Good job, Jim. From twelve p.m. to four p.m. For more information, go to www.officialcampkawani.com. Hanson Public Library Open House will be held on Saturday, November 16th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Peter the Cat, the great Rolando Magic Show, Tom Boyer on piano and John Wall on bass with light refreshments. Space is limited for the Magic Show. Register online at hansonlibrary.org dash calendar of events or call 781-293-2151. Chief Michael Mix is pleased to announce the Hanson Police Department in conjunction with the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, will once again be participating in National Drug Take Back Day. When? Saturday, October 26th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Where? Hanson Police Department, 775 Main Street. What? National Drug Take Back Day is a free, no questions asked event that gives the community the opportunity to aid in the fight against substance abuse by disposing of potentially dangerous, expired, unwanted, or unused prescription drugs. As part of the event, residents can drop off unwanted pills or patches, but not liquids, needles, or sharps. Volunteers are needed on the following committees. 200th Anniversary Capital Improvement, Conservation Commission Regular and Two Associate Members, Cultural Council, Disabilities, Economic Development, Energy Committee, Finance, Highway Building Committee, Historical Commission, Memorial Day Patriotic Observance, Memorial Field Trustees, and Zoning Board Alternate. Applications for appointment and info on the committee is available on the town website, www.hanson-mass.gov. Upcoming meetings, 200th Anniversary Committee has been moved to, I think it's been moved since this. It, it's the 24th. We're having it. Th it is the 24th. Yeah, we're having it this Thursday. All right, this Thursday, October 24th, 7 p.m. The selectmen's meeting. There will be one on Tuesday, November 5th, and one on Tuesday, November 19th, at 7 p.m. The end. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, sir. Second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs>